Stitchy Tube, settle down and watch Stitchy Tube. Got a lot to talk about today because I just got back from the Midwest Stitchers Retreat after a month. Really, it's been two months full of just travel, travel, travel. Ruby's real glad I'm home and I feel like she's been all up in my business. I don't know. I don't know if we're going to, we'll see. We might get to meet Ruby today. I don't think I've ever done a proper introduction of Ruby, our oldest cat. Oldest and probably most normal, healthiest cat too. Ruby, what do you think? You up for a debut? She says, I don't know. I'm sniffing out what you got. Good to be here. So good to be here. So good to be here. So good to be here. Uh, I don't like to travel, but I love seeing people and I love doing things, but I wish I could magically <laughs> apparate. I don't know. Harry Potter has something like operatorium or something like that. I wish I could do that, whatever he, whatever he's got going on there. But um, I can't. And so what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I'm glad to be here. Because uh, there's no place like home, right? Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home, Ruby. Maybe my singing will drive her away. My hair is starting to fill back in after my haircut. I feel like I shouldn't have cut it right before the retreat because it looks kind of hacked. And then um, now it just kind of starts to settle in and be like, all right, let's do this. So, okay, Stitchy Tube, 29. Lucky number 29. And uh, happy to be here for the 29th iteration. Uh, I'm mixed really everything way up today. I want to start off with the winner of last time's drawing, which is Joan. I feel like I got a fuzz here and it's going to drive some of y'all crazy. Done. Joan Cruz, you won the squirrel magnet that is hand stitched by me. The question last time was, what is it that makes you feel all warm and cozy during fall? And she said she loves snuggling up by her fireplace with her blanket and her reading. And she mentioned her fireplace several times. I feel like it was important for her to mention the fireplace. And we have a fireplace that we have never like used, used. We don't have gas that runs to our, we don't have gas, number one, which is always a good thing, but we don't have gas that runs to our neighborhood. So we, we don't have a gas stove and our fireplace is gas operated, but you have to like get a propane tank and like hook it up front and keep it filled. We just never really have bothered. Um, during Christmas, sometimes we set candles inside and, and put them, uh, you know, kind of light them and make it seem kind of more cozy. Maybe we'll get the propane tank this year. It might be kind of fun to have an actual fire. Probably burn our house down, but you know, it is warm and cozy. The next drawing. I ended up buying you guys something for the next drawing because I went to Stitchville for the Midwest Stitchers Retreat and they have a really cool clearance section that you never know what you're gonna find. There's always things back there that um, are discontinued. And I bought something that I'm pretty sure I bought last time I went to Stitchville, so I bought it a second time. I'm gonna give it to you. It's a discontinued chart, reproduction sampler chart. Lucy Dunning, 1811 by Threads of Gold. They are not reproducing charts anymore. Okay, so we'll get it right up there. Pretty, pretty sampler. Lots of things to love. I love the real geometric lawn. Isn't that cool? But this chart came out. I didn't want to open it up because it's it's got the seal. It's sealed tightly. I don't know when this came out, um, but it's not available anymore. And it was a $19 chart, but I only paid $9.50. And I thought since I double purchased, I would just go ahead and give it to you guys. So one of you is going to be lucky enough to win this chart and the question that I'd like you to answer is, how do you keep track of which charts you have? Um, I, I don't. It's here, and then as I get older, it'll just be a disaster. But I had customers that would come in. Some of them had, like Jen, I think, my friend Jen has an, an app that she keeps track of things in. I had another customer with a little black book, and usually, you know, those are names of ladies or gentlemen. But her little black book was actually lists of all the patterns she had. And then some of the pages, she actually had to add paper and it would fold down. Like, like a, you know, when you'd show pictures of your grandkids, she would just <laughs> had so many in there. Do you, do you keep track of your charts or do you not? Because, like, I feel like you get them and then sometimes you loan them and they don't come back. Or you loan them and you don't have them for a long time. I'm not naming any names. So, <laughs> no, just kidding. Keep those. Um, but I, I have charts that I've borrowed too, so they're not te technically mine, but I just really don't keep track. So if you don't keep track, that's fine. Say I don't keep track and it's a mess or say I do keep track and here's what I do. 
And so that's the next drawing. Uh, next time I film one of these videos, I will have drawn a name for that. Now, um, I, was, I was just getting ready to make this video. It's always a lot of work to kind of gather stuff together and make notes. But I was like, I just vacuumed in here a couple of days ago when I got back. And I was like, gonna vacuum again. And I thought, you know what, we're, we're good enough friends now that I feel like I can invite y'all over without having to vacuum and do too much cleaning. Plus you can't really see the floor anyway. So maybe it is vacuumed. I have a new little segment. I don't plan on doing this very often. It's called I Give Up. I give up, don't wanna do it. Give up, can't make me do it. I give up on this project. And sometimes you just got to be honest with yourself. Sometimes you got to say, this is a give up. I think there's a name for it. Is it a give up? There's some kind of name for something that, you know, like there's a, there's an FFO, which is a fully finished object. There's a UFO, which is an unfinished object. There's a WIP, which is a work in progress. Is a give up just a give up? I feel like it's a give up. So I stitched most of, and I don't have my iron because Graham borrowed it for a Halloween craft with his, with his uh, roommates. And I'm hoping to get that back today. So none of my things are going to be ironed. But I, I stitched most of this piece, you know, over the last f five or six years. And I got everything done except for their legs. And I got stuck on the legs. And I don't, it's not like it will be hard. I have taken this project out probably like five times where I'm just like, you know what? Just sit down and finish this. I can't do it. I took it out of the retreat. I was like, you know what? I don't want to. All I have left is the legs, I think, and the buttons, which are in here. And I have all the charts for the leg placement. So it's like all 12 of the flock charts. And the stitching is all done. It's on the called for fabric, which is 30 count red pair. And um, I just don't want to. And so I can let it sit in my, you know, projects cabinet thing and it'll sit there and sit there and sit there or I can put it to some good use. So um, this is not going to be a giveaway giveaway. It's going to come with a stipulation, which is if you um, would like this project, um, just say that I would like the birds or I'd like to stitch the birds. And I would like, if you win, you to be willing to donate at least $25 to Southern Pines Animal Shelter. And this is worth way more than that. Um, I think just the charts alone, if you bought all of them, $8 a piece times 12, that's what, $96 worth of charts. Plus it's got all the buttons. Plus it's almost done. So um, if you would like it, just say I would like the birds and then I'll draw for it next time. And you know what? I feel like it'll be kind of a load off my shoulders to not have to worry about doing it. So you're helping me, I'm helping you, you're helping the shelter. It's like a trifecta of happiness. I give up and I'll even send it in this thing. So there it is. Um, that's, that's, I give up. That's my segment, I give up. And I don't give up on many, I really don't. Um, but once in a while, maybe I'll go through my stash and be like, you know what, which one is giving you problems? This one to me is my main problem right now. And I feel like if I give it away, it'll be a good thing. Okay. That's enough about that. I give up. Went to the Midwest Stitchers retreat last week. Um, I knew going into it that it was going to go fast. And I kept saying to people, this is going to go so fast. This is going to go so fast. So you're trying to like live in the moment, every moment at retreat and stay up as late as you can. And for like four days, I got six hours or less of sleep a night. And I really am an eight or a nine hour person if I'm going to function properly. And um, there was a lot of travel involved and a lot of prep work because I, I got a kit together for the retreat. So I did take a nap on Saturday afternoon for like two and a half hours, which was great and very necessary. But it had a great time. Uh, Michelle Farm Girl throws a great party. The retreat center was lovely. The people were lovely. I don't know how many people I heard say this was the most fun I've ever had at a retreat, ever. And I think, you know, it's fun to get gifts and it's fun to do drawings and exchanges and things. And it's fun to stitch, but it's just fun to be with other stitchers and just kind of really get to know people. And there were quite a few floss tubers there, but there were also quite a few non-floss tubers there or people who watch floss tube. And so um, it was not a at all. It was not a, I'm like, oh, we're the floss tubers. So we're like famous in the stitching world. 
and then oh we don't you know we're not on fossil fuel. it was tables were mixed and people were enjoying each other and everybody you know kind of had their own personality their own projects they were working on it's always always fun to see what people are working on because it's just you just see such variety and so that was fun there uh we left thursday afternoon and we didn't get into minneapolis until i mean it was late like 10 30 we got to our hotel by i don't i'm gonna spare you the timeline but it just was late it was a late night um, on the way down to Gulfport to catch our flight, though, Jennifer and I stopped at a, a quilting store that I had never been to called the Fabric Dock. It's literally 25 minutes, probably, from Hattiesburg. Not far at all. Every time I pass it, going to Gulfport, I go, oh, that looks really cute. Because it's this little, it's kind of like in the middle of nowhere on the highway. And it's a cute little housey, like, a framey kind of place with, you know, just like they'll have, like, clothes lines out with fabric hanging from them and just really cute on the outside so you're like oh I bet that's really a good store and it seems like every time I go past it they're you know like it's not oh you're always closed it's just that I go past on a Sunday or maybe I'm going past and I really don't have time to stop and so Jen on Thursday our plan was 12 30 we were going to leave by 12 30 to catch our flight at four whatever I, I spare you a timeline but anyway she calls at 1130 and goes, I'm on my way. And I went, OMG, I am like not at all ready. I have it planned out that I have one more hour to get everything set. And she goes, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm just so excited. <laughs> I'm like, if you can give me just a little more time. And I got it together in about a half an hour. And then she came and picked me up. So we drove. And then as we're, as we're nearing it, she goes, do you think we could stop at the fabric dock? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to go there. So we went in. It's cute as nine buttons. It's not just cute as a button, it's cute as nine buttons. Probably the cutest quilt store I've ever been in. And um, we signed up to take a quilt class in November. And so I'm gonna do a video there to like take you on a tour and show you what all's there. But so cute. Jen and I bought some finishing fabrics and um, talked to the owner who is super sweet for just a little bit. And we're on to get, get our plane. So then Friday, Jen said, I need to stop at Stitchville before we head to the retreat. We could get in at noon, I think. And um, she said, I need to stop at Stitchville to get a couple of things for my exchange. So you don't you don't just stop at Stitchville. You don't just be like, we're just going to pop in and get two threads. That's all we're going to do. You go, you go to Stitchville and you go there and you look. And so had a great time. It's super weird because, you know, we're watching each other on TV. Like I watch Bendy Stitchy and I watch uh, Julie at Gulf Coast and I watch Farm Girl and and uh, Holly and Anita. And, and so it's just weird to just like, oh, you're right here. Hello, person that has been in my house. <laughs> you know what I mean? You feel like these are people you know. So to hear them in person, like with your ears and their mouth is right there, it's kind of cool. Like it's kind of feels... Like you're meeting somebody famous, even though we're just really selectively famous. But it was very fun. And I met people that are not on FlossTube that also were so lovely. People were so nice. Very, very nice group of people. So we went to Stitchville and I got a bunch of stuff. And I'm going to save all of my show and tell for the end of the video. Because I know some of you don't like to watch that. And I kind of ended up coming back with a lot. So I'm going to push it to the end. And then that way, if you don't want to listen to me blab, you can just, you know, click away. So we went to the fabric dock, got to the retreat. Michelle right away presented me with a gift um, from 1803 Ohio Farm Baskets on Etsy. And um, I had purchased one of her, her boxes before, her baskets. It's over there. And so she gave me this one because she was giving, at the retreat, you could get an Ohio basket or a um, LaHaye's shaker box. But Michelle ordered this for me. It says stitching and it's a homemade basket. And I can't tell you how perfect this was because when I got back, I was like, you know what? This is my, my inbox. <laughs> my inbox up to now has been just a pile, you know, like a three inch pile on the table. And I work through it and stuff, but this way it can all be contained and hopefully too many cats won't sit in it. So it was about 75 people and there was all kinds of eye candy. There were tables all along one wall that were... Um, people's show and tell. And the cool thing about the show and tell what, that I hadn't even really thought about was not all of them were finished. So some of them were completely finished as, you know, smalls or framed or whatever. 
And then some of them were finished but not finished, like they were finished with the stitching but they weren't finished finished. And then there were some things that were still in progress. So that was really cool to look at everybody's projects. Um, goodie bags were handed out full of great things that people donated towards the retreat. Thank you to all who donated. Um, it was really great. There were, was also a freebie. There was like two tables of freebies and, um, it was bins full of stuff. It was probably like four or five tubs of stuff that was just given away. And, um, then there were a couple of tables with our smalls exchange and our gift exchange and then there were a couple more tables with raffle items now the raffle was organized by michelle to benefit uh, southern pines animal shelter which is where all of our cats come from and um, the shelter that i've worked closely with for probably eight or nine years now and the the items that were donated were amazing and i i mean i hate to single anybody out but i'm gonna say a very 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 special thank you to um kathleen from kathleen's trodden trails She's super talented, and she donated the prettiest, cutest, coolest hooked rug of a witch. And that item alone, I think, raised like eight to nine hundred dollars. And so, what you did is you bought five dollar tickets um, from a roll of tickets, and then you could buy as many as you wanted for five dollars a piece. And then every item that was donated, and there probably were twenty, maybe twenty drawings or something like that, twenty five drawings. They had r red solo cups, and you just put put them in whichever ones you wanted to win. So you could say, well, I'm going to go all in on this or I'm going to disperse evenly. And um, Michelle encouraged people a couple of times to buy more. And I'm going to say that the, the uh, raffle raised $3,295, which was amazing. Um, our original goal was, I, I mean, I kind of, $1,000 would have been great. $1,000 will feed the shelter for a month. So $3,295, I think is what it was, will will do a lot of good. When I came back with this money, I hadn't really told Ginny, the manager at the shelter, what we were doing. And so um, I came back with a stack of checks <laughs> and I said, here you go. And she was like, oh my goodness, where'd you get these? And I told her all about it. And I said, now, you know, I told the gals at the retreat, the gals and the guy and the guy, Gerald, that a lot of times people have a sizable donation and they want to dictate where that money goes. So a lot of people will say like, I would like to donate $5,000, but, and the but is always like, a, mm, but I want to use it to whatever, build a blah, blah, blah. And I want my name to be on it. And it's like, oh, we didn't really need a blah, blah, blah. And then you have to create a designated fund and accounting wise, it's just a mess. And you have to, it's just, Stipulations on a donation are not as helpful, especially when the person donating the money is making up what they want it to be used for. Because a lot of times what, what a nonprofit organization needs is operating money. We need to turn our lights on every day. We need to pick up poop. We need to hire employees to pick up poop. And not a lot of people wanna donate money for things like that, but it's the vital thing that needs to be done. And so, um, Anyway, I told, I told the group, you know, it's possible that this money will just go into the operating costs, you know, just whatever. And everybody was great with that. But Jenny said, actually, what they're needing right now is money for heartworm treatment and some FIV stuff they're doing with the cats. So literally the money that was raised will save lives. Literally, literally. I use literally, literally. That there are dogs that will be getting heartworm treatment so they will live because this money was donated. And that just gave me goosebumps a little bit. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Jenny and I are working on a, a fundraiser that we're gonna uh, organize through the uh, through my Stitchy Tube channel to do something really special. And I'm gonna announce that next time. We needed a little more time to get it together. I kind of announced it on Instagram, but we're still putting the final nuts and bolts into it. Okay. Um, the goodie bags, raffle. Okay, so there was an ornament exchange. Not an ornament exchange, a smalls exchange. It could be an ornament, but it had to be something, I forget, something small. And so I'm going to put a picture of what I made right here. And I was working it on, on it on my last Hang With Me video. And it turned out really, really cute. And the person who received it, I don't remember her name, thought it was really neat. And it was it's a Blackbird Designs from a discontinued book. And it was really, it was really fun to do. So that was my small that I donated. 
you know, sometimes when you go to a retreat and you haven't been to that retreat before, you're like, you know, they give you like, here's the assignment. And then people start opening other people's things and you're like, oh, I didn't include all that. <laughs> I mean, I, my small was the small. And um, sometimes people included just like other gifts and things. And so I guess I'll have to do it up a little bit better next time. But I was very fortunate to get a famous, a famous small from Pam of Pam and Steph fame. Just keep stitching. And this was, this was the one that I received and it's a Lizzie Kate pattern and she did a great job stitching. It's very beautifully stitched and finished. They had um, the finisher at Keepsakes do the finishing on this. It looks like it's stitched in the over dyed threads. I think she said she used what was called for and then here's the back of it it feels like it's stuffed with walnut shells it's got this cool little pin with an acorn fob and then this fabric on the back is so interesting and Pam said what this gal does sometimes is she goes to thrift stores and buys clothes that just have interesting fabrics to use for her finishing it doesn't smell like old clothes it's very 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 cute so I thank her for her talents I was tickled tickled to get hers that was really really cool and then we also had a gift exchange and you had to do like a $25 or $20 just needlework related gift. And so that was super fun. And not now, not everybody, you didn't have to participate in these things. They were optional, but a lot of people did choose to participate. And I got this from Robbie, who is so sweet. And, you know, I was pretty, I don't have anything like this. So I was pretty excited to get this. She made this. And it's a, you know, it's kind of like, I guess I would say a modern huswife or whatever, where it's, oop, it's got all kinds of pockets and clear plastic, you know, sleeves so you can stick things in. It's got that really cute scissors. I think the scissors has a fob on it too. I haven't, I haven't really opened this stuff since I got home because I've just been trying to get caught up. Oh yeah, see, it's got a pretty little sparkly blue fob to match. And um, she has only, she only made three of these, one for herself, one for Julie of Gulf Coast Stitches and one for me. And uh, it came with this cute little um, Oort, you know, Oort uh, container or, uh, you know, whatever you want to put in there. It's super cute. And just a lot of work would have had to go into this. And I can't even imagine how you would put something like this together. But um, it's just so, so cool. And it all collapses back together. So I'm going to have fun filling that up with, um, you know, for my next retreat, especially that I go to so that I have everything kind of tucked here. I, I need to be more organized. Every time I go to a retreat, I'm like, oh, these ladies have, have it together. You know, a lot of stuff, times my stuff, are, my stuff is in plastic bags. And so um, I, tried to, I tried to be like together and have things in, in, um, in project bags. But, you know, a lot of times it's just kind of a mess. So I thank Robbie for that. I thank Pam for that to get two homemade things. That was such a treat. We all know um, how much love and work goes into something homemade. Um... So, uh, I'm, I'll show the, so, uh, oh, the, I got, everybody got a door prize and they just drew numbers for that. And I got, um, Humble Bumble Stitcher not only donated to the raffle, so she helped raise funds to save dogs and cats, but she also donated to the door prizes and look what I got. Oh my gosh. It's got a little bee. It's really, really cute. If y'all have not been to the Humble Bumble Stitcher yet, what is holding you back? I showed a few videos ago my witch that I got from her, which is so cute. You know what? I'm going to get that witch. Hang on. Oh. Jennifer and I one day went and um, did some shopping on Humble Bumble Stitcher. Look at this witch. She's got little, little dainty feet and a little pumpkin. They're not expensive and her shipping is very reasonable, even though it's coming from England. I'm going to peek at your bloomers. So anyway, I got that as the door prize, and then I'm just tickled pink because I just think it is so cute. Come here, witchy. Here, you sit in the basket. Okay, so that was the door prize. Uh, but I, I, really, it was just fun to talk to people, even if there weren't all these goodies, which I'm glad there were because it's fun. It really is just nice to get to talk to people about not only about needlework, it's just about like how they're doing, what's going on in their lives. Um, I had questions for people and people had questions for me. And, you know, <laughs> we all knew like all weekend, time is going too fast, time is going too fast. And I tried to get around and talk to every table. 
but I just wish, like, I wish I could have sat with some people for longer. I felt like it was just, you know, like <laughs> it was an hourglass of time, but the hole was extra wide and the sand was just slipping, slipping, slipping. So um, hope to see all of you again someday soon. Wish we could all, <laughs> wish we could all just live together and we, in uh, harmony and have a big center that we could all get together in. But it was really just a great, great time. And so I'll talk more about like what I got from Stitchville and from the freebie table at the end. Thank you, thank you again, Michelle. Thank you to everybody who contributed prizes for the raffle or who donated money for the raffle. You really did help make a difference here in Hattiesburg and there are some animals that will have a better life because of you. Okay, let's talk about what I'm all into. I have a bunch. So at the retreat, <laughs> we, we tried to check in several times because we got there earlier than check-in and they didn't have our room ready, which is fine because it wasn't supposed to be ready till three. So we go to the front desk like the second time or the third time and the room was ready. And I noticed for the first time that there is a bowl, like a basket of apples, just, you know, take an apple on the thing. And normally I think I would not even really give that a second glance because... I don't know. I, I like apples, but usually it's just like red delicious or something. And I have snobby apple taste, I guess. But I recognize the glint. Let me see if I can find a picture of a Paula Red apple. Paula Red. And I'm going to leave it there so y'all can appreciate it. I go, oh, are those Paula Red? And the lady goes, uh, I don't know. They're apples. You feel free to take one. And so I grab one and I bite it and I go, oh. And she goes, oh, oh, aren't they good? I said, this is so amazing. I haven't had a Paula Red for 10 years. <laughs> when we lived in Southern Minnesota, where there are orchards, you could get these Paula Red apples. They have a very short season as far as like picking and be, there just aren't a lot of them. They're not one you're gonna find in a lot of grocery stores. If you see them, please try them. They are so, so good. And all weekend I was like hoarding Paula Reds. I'm just like eating them. They're gone. I don't have any more. I brought them home and I let the boys each have one too. And they were like, oh, these are really good. They didn't even remember them. That's how long it had been. But they, they're they very shiny and it's a very deep, beautiful red with bright chartreuse truce green. They're really shiny. And the skin is thicker and very tart and tangy. And then the inside is like creamy, sweet, white. It's just... Either Graham or Harrison was like, this is the best apple I've ever had. And so if you see Paula Reds, you may be able to still get them right now, but definitely do look for them in the future. I'm way into Paula Reds and I'm so tickled. I was, I told Jennifer, I said, I think this is one of my highlights of the retreat is getting to have a Paula Red apple. I'm all into Starbucks mugs and I blame Bendy Stitchy for a lot of things just in general, but I blame her for the Starbucks mugs. It's kind of fun to see her mugs and I, I took her a Mississippi mug because the first time Starbucks did the whatever, you are here mugs, they skipped Mississippi and North Dakota because I think they were like, eh, <laughs> is anyone going to care? So this next time they actually did do a North Dakota and a Mississippi mug. And I have the North Dakota one, but I took Bendy a Mississippi mug because it was a new thing. And I think she drank from it on her last video. So when I went to Seattle to visit the boys, the only thing I brought back was a, a Seattle... Starbucks mug. Super cute. Oh, there's the airplane for Boeing. My brother works for Boeing. And then going to Minneapolis then, I had to get one for the Twin Cities. And you know, we're from just three hours north of there, so that's very cool. And because I'm newly into drinking coffee from my Nespresso maker, I'm actually, I'm using these and I'm enjo I enjoy it. Like I, I like the coffee, but I also am like, oh, this reminds me of my trip. I'm all into clean sheets. And I mean, I don't think, are, are there any of us that are all into like dirty sheets? I really like dirty sheets that you've slept in for three weeks. That's awesome. If I was rich, <laughs> what am I saying? I could do, I could literally change my sheets every day if I wanted to, but I don't do it. But I do it once a week. And so I sent a text to the guys and I said, hey, I'm on my way home. And Harrison was so sweet. He said, um, hey, do you think you had time to wash your sheets before you left or would you like me to wash them for you? And I was like, oh, that's so nice of you. And so he did. He washed my sheets and remade my bed. 
and to get into clean sheets was such a treat. That was so nice. I'm all into my new glasses. I told, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't know they didn't. Okay, okay, small pleasures. I told you last time that a lady wandered into my booth and stole my glasses, so I had to get new ones. I went to the same place that I bought the other ones, and they were so kind, they gave me a huge discount. They basically, if I paid for the frames, but they gave me the lenses for free, and I don't know, to me, that's a big deal. That was very, very kind of them, and they're Ray-Bans, and I like them better than the ones that got stolen. So I'm just making a, what is it, silk purse out of a sow's ear. Um... I like this lip balm. You know, it's getting to be fall, and Minneapolis was super dry. All of us were like, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> no, I'm gonna choke. It was cold. It was cool. It was cold, so it felt really dry. This chapstick, total hydration. It is total hydration. I don't want partial hydration. I want total hydration. I just like it. It's a cool lip balm. If you see it, it's great. This is. Sweet peach. Um, the last thing that I'm all into, I mean, I'm into lots of things, but I had to come up with a list, is this. And it just came in the mail. And I, it hasn't been used yet, so I can do this and say like, oh, it's so soft. This is an OXO, like, duster. And I have had this on my Amazon gift list for a couple of years now. And I don't know, I was looking for something on my on my gift list or adding to, I don't know. I was looking at it this week for some reason. And I was like, you know what, Therese? No one is gonna buy you a duster as a gift. Even though you would like it. I just feel like most people would say, you know what, that is rude <laughs> to get somebody cleaning supplies as their gift, but I wanted it. And when I got back this week, I totally went through the, the um, hitching post here and dusted everything down because it was very dusty. Things get dusty, I have cats. But I also, there's all kinds of fabric and paper and threads in here. And all three of those things make a lot of dust. Um, I worked at a couple of bookstores. Let me tell you about the dust. And so I haven't used this yet, but you can pull, there's a little snap here. And so you can pull this off and you can wash it in water. They don't recommend bleach. It wasn't terribly expensive. And I love OXO products. They're just made really well. And I think it was $8, but I think it's going to be great. And I don't think you have to use any cleaner. I think it'll just pick up the dust. Okay, that's what I'm all into this week. Page two. Paul Harvey used to, what did he used to do? <laughs> Didn't he used to announce when he was flipping the page? And now you know the rest of the story. Let me tell you though, I gotta, go, I gotta flip back a little bit. Ginger Gerald, I talked about him in my last hang with me. He did bring Henry VIII. And I'll put a picture at the tail end of this video of me with Ginger Gerald and Henry VIII. And it's pretty amazing. Um, I went on and on about Ginger Gerald and his King Henry VIII piece that he's doing over one. It's a heaven and earth designs piece. And after I had talked about Ginger Gerald and Henry for like 10 minutes, I kind of talked myself into going and getting a heaven and earth design chart. And <laughs> I think while it was still, my video was still uploading, I went and got this, <laughs> my first heaven and earth design. And Jennifer said, oh no, now you're gonna make me do one. But it's so cool and I love Vincent van Gogh. And I wanted, this was the only portrait they had and I like this one. I think it's gonna be a lot of brown, it's a lot of brown. But um, you know, it's really cool. I don't think I'm gonna stitch it. It's a, it's a, it's a healthy chart. I don't think I'm going to stitch it over one. I don't enjoy stitching over one. I don't. I, I, it's fine if it's a verse. And it is um, otherwise not a lot of fun. I can't do it quickly. I can't use the sewing method. And so I think I'm going to stitch it over two on 40 count. And it'll be about 20 by 25 inches, which is a pretty hefty size piece. Um, I had a couple other things from the retreat here too. Sorry to backtrack. I just have so many things here to show you. I have so much show and tell. Um, Lori from Textilist uh, here on YouTube brought some things that she hand dyed and I, I bought these from her, um, some chenille and some of this beautiful ribbon. So pretty, and, you know, and they'll just, they'll go in my trim drawer and I will use them eventually. And then um, she had this beautiful fabric too. 
and it's so, so pretty. So I can't wait to give those a try. She's so talented. And then I forgot to show too, my friend Sue turned 50 this week and I'm right behind you, Sue. I got another year and a half, but she made me this bag. I had given her some of this fabric. I think at um, the last show we were at, she was like, oh, look at this. And I was like, just take it. So she gave me this, she made this bag and it's really cool. And she's such a good seamstress. Like you can never, it just, she's awesome. And then um, in it, she gave me a whole bunch of this fabric that looks like a doily. Like it's not a doily, but it looks like a doily and it fits in there perfectly. Oh, look, did I see this before? She gave me some thread drops too, some Christmas thread drops. How cute is that? One thing I've been doing with um, cards that I get is I make thread drops. You know, if somebody sends me a card, um, I'll hang on to it for a little bit and reread it eventually, but then I just um, turn the front of it into thread drops and then that's a way of reusing your cards. So thank you, Sue. So, so cute. I just have piles of stuff. I'm s such a lucky gal. Okay, page two, back to page two. I took probably five or six uh, needlework pieces to work on at the retreat. It kind of varied. I, I really only worked on one. I took that bird piece out and took it out, sat with it for five or 10 minutes trying to get motivated and just couldn't do it. But I did work on my village at Hawk Run Hollow. And that was the only piece I worked on, I think. I didn't get a ton of stitching done because I just was chatting away with people. But there I did that St. Peter's Church. I'm almost done with that square. And it's so, so pretty. And you can see, you know, this fabric, if you look at it, looks messy. It's from uh, X Jude Designs on Etsy. But you can see once you do the individual squares, the modeling is much more subtle. So it, once you frame in on this, it's gonna look like stained fabric, but it's not gonna look like you know, a crime scene anymore and <laughs> look, you know, and I, that to me is very, very cool. I'm stitching it in the called for silks, but if I don't have them, I'm just subbing out something I have. These willow trees are going to be really, really pretty. And she, Kathy says in her chart that she misspelled Isaiah and the model stitcher stitched it like she charted it. So by the time she got it, print, you know, framed, it was like, oops, I left the misspelling because I love stuff like that. And I also made a boo-boo on the fence. And I basically just kept making the boo-boo across so it would all look the same. So my fence is a little different than hers is, but it's really quite fine. So I'm working on that. Um, I'm, I started, so when I came home, on my way home, I was like, you know what? When I get home, I'm gonna spend you know, Monday or Tuesday, whatever, catching up on work, answering emails, processing orders, you know, updating the site, whatever. And then I really just need to unplug for two days because I've been going at it hard for months now, where it's just every day it's work, work, work. And I'm just going to not, I'm, I'll let myself watch you, YouTube. But other than that, I don't want to check, you know, Instagram. I don't want to check my email. I need to just unplug and relax. And I did not do that. <laughs> so I did a little bit, but I maybe this weekend I'll, I'll be able to take a little more time off. But I don't know. It's just not my way, I guess. But I did start a project on my the fabric I dye. And it's the first time I've done that. And the project that I started is called Salem Village by Not Forgotten Farm. Keep them in your memory, Salem Village. And it's really cool. And I started this on a piece of, I think this is grunge. I'm sorry it's not ironed. Like I said, Graham borrowed my iron for craft projects. And there's my start. And it's gonna be really, really pretty. It's just in DMC. And I'm having a great time. So I'm working on that and then I have a model that I'm working on to a sampler um, that I'm working on to release. And then, okay, I already showed you the pin cushion for the exchange. I also did the finishing on the retreat piece and I'll put a picture here of the retreat piece. I designed a pin cushion using a Hobby Lobby candlestick stand. And so that I wanted a, a substantial, sometimes when you have, you're sitting with a pin cushion, for me anyway, you can kind of see here, I just end up with piles of floss and things and my a little pin cushion gets buried. And so this pin cushion, it sits up high on a, on a candlestick and so you can, you know, put your, your pins and needles in there easily. 
Um, but I also made the back of the piece magnetic so that if you wanted to use the candlestick for a candlestick or if you wanted to um, make another design, you could switch them out. And so I just, in it, it, uh, the magnets worked great with that candlestick because it was a metal metal top. And then the little fob I designed with a pocket on the back and the kit was very complete. It came with everything that people needed. And you can tuck a little piece of paper in there. And I thought sometimes, you know, people will design something where it says, you know, such and such retreat with a date. And this one is a little more subtle than that. You can stitch it and then you don't have to have it say the, the retreat if you don't want to. But the little pocket lets you put the little piece of paper inside and you could have people sign it or just write the retreat date or memory about the retreat or whatever and tuck it in that pocket. And now we have a little memory. I also got back from the framer Ann Grant. I showed you Ann Grant last time um, that I got back the model from Lindy at the Silver Needle. But then I took the piece, the original, finally to the frame shop and had them finish it, finish it, fully finish it. And here it is. Oh, it's going to get glare. I did put... It's got, you know, fancy glass on it, but oh, and that's just going to reflect everything, isn't it? There you can kind of see it. Oop. Oop. Anyway, it turned out very, very pretty. If I do this, that's a little better. The frame is gorgeous. Um, they tried to talk me into something kind of gold and ornate, and I really wanted something dark and slightly ornate. And it turned out very, very pretty. I was worried that it was going to stick out of the back because a lot of the frames that they had um, were kind of, kind of thinner frames. And then the deeper frames that they had, watch out, Grumpy. Watch out. The deeper frames that they had were had a narrow, you know, they were narrow frames. And so they didn't have, give it a lot of substance. So there's that. And I think I'm going to hang that in my bedroom. Okay, questions this week. I didn't forget about questions. I normally put them at the front, but I saved them until now. Um, first question, coincidentally, is, is Grumpy a rag doll? No. Um, she is a feral mixy, you know, mix, kind of mixed, whatever. And she's a girl. A lot of people refer to Grumpy as a boy, but um, she's a sweet girl. And rag dolls, <laughs> one of the characteristics of rag dolls is that when you pick them up, they become completely floppy like a rag doll. As you can see, Grumpy does not become completely floppy. <laughs> she, she has gotten more and more tolerant of being held. Now, she will sit on my lap all day long, but if I pick her up, she does that thing with her arm. So it's okay. She's not a rag doll. That was Aileen uh, Naggett asked that question. She's very pretty, though, probably like Siamese type mix, kind of. We don't know. We don't know her heritage. Teresa Morgan wanted to know what necklace um, was, was I wearing and last time. And I actually wore the same outfit as I did last time, too. It's just what was clean. It's just what was clean, what came out of the dryer. But this is a um, Kathy Barrick. I'll hold it up closer. Where she has buyers in France that buy old jewelry, and then she takes it apart and then reimagines it. So every time you get a piece from Kathy, it's... Um, it's completely unique. There won't be another one. It's got this, uh, she wondered if it was a dragon, but it's actually a uh, scissor tail swallow. And so that's like that. Ooh, put it on. Why not? Then I'll look exactly like last time, except for my cool new glasses. And so once in a while at market, I will buy myself a piece of her jewelry. I'd love it all. I mean, it's amazing. Oop, did I? Whatever. Um, so this is a piece that I bought at one market. I just thought it was really, really neat. Sarah Brunsvold asked, do fancy flosses tangle more easily? I don't know. I don't know, like, if there's an official answer to that. I have found sometimes that, yes, they do tangle more easily. I don't know why that is, but sometimes they don't. And sometimes I get, like, a, a skein of DMC that I'm like, oh, darn it. It tangles really, really easily. And so I don't, I don't know. Um, you can try, like, a thread conditioner to see if that helps you at all with your tangling. Uh, you gotta just remember to let it dangle, you know, where you just like, once in a while, if your thread is kind of starting to seem like it's winding on itself, just hold your piece up, let your thread hang down with the needle and it'll, it'll unspin and then you can start stitching again. But I don't know, it has been my experience that yes, sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. So do they? 
Sometimes. I think, I think the answer is sometimes. So those are the questions. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will answer you in your comments, but I also will answer them on the next video if it's something I haven't you know, really answered at length before. I'm not doing a list of 10 this week because it would make this video too long. But um, I am going to go over three things that I have in my shop. And one of them is, and I don't even have, do I have any? I put it all away. Picture this plus fabric. I'll put some pictures here while I talk. Uh, Marilyn is so nice and she has really cool colors of fabric. I think a lot of people use her fabrics for things like Mirabilia's and that's not really something I sell on my on my website but I do sell a lot of samplers and prim type things and she has a lot of really great neutrals and so right now I think I've already added 60 fabrics to my website including Ada hand dyed Ada and if it's listed if you can buy it that means I have it in stock and so as things sell out I'll reorder and so um Look around and see if you see something that you like. I got a whole, whole bunch of it in for the Galleria market and sold a bunch of it, but brought a lot of it back too. And now I have caught up with getting it all listed on my site. I did just get some Dames of the Needle fabrics in too, and I'll be listing those soon as well. And I have more fabric on order for me to dye. I almost sold out at Galleria. There was just a little bit of 46 and I think 40 count left. <coughs> what there on that dresser that little pile is what I have left oh there's some 25 count in there too that's really really cool it's really cool but people weren't as interested in that that's, that's really cool um and I also got more I um, got went and got some more ticking to dye because I announced last time maybe that I had hand dyed ticking and it blew out like in a day it was all gone so I am going to be dyeing more ticking this week while I wait for that fabric to come in. Okay, so that's item number one. Picture this plus fabric. My second item is, and I'm, I'm slowly getting these added. When I went to Galleria, I started an account with this new company. And one of the things that I sold were these mason jars. And they're reproduction mason jars, so they're not, um, they're not actually old. They're just made to look old. They're based on an actual antique. They're molded from an antique. And I get these from a company... And this one here has got a, it comes with a frog lid for you to make flower arrangements in, um, which I think is really, really cool. But I think it would be super cute with buttons, like antique buttons in it. And the cool thing is you could kind of dump them in your hand like a salt and pepper shaker for buttons. So I've got that. I also have a couple of these left. I, I'm ordering more of all of this stuff. This is a mason jar with a zinc bird lid. Oh, so cute. But I have some dough bowls that I'm getting listed and some um, towels. And so look for that kind of stuff. The mason jar stuff, just type mason jar in the search on my website. And the, the link to my website is below. Um, but you can look in, in my, the area of my website called Cool Stuff and Other Junk. And I'm slowly getting things out of it that belong in other categories. So like today I moved all of the carriage house sampling stuff so that they don't show up in cool stuff and other junk cool stuff and other junk is going to be just kind of my catch-all for you know things like this um things like the beeswaxers uh just kind of miscellaneous designs from people i don't maybe necessarily carry a lot of their designs but i carry a few so cool stuff and other junk is just kind of a mishmash and so that's where you're going to find stuff like that and then the third thing that i'm going to show this time and i don't know if i've shown these before but i'm gonna show them again if i did because i like them um Primitive hair, I love her designs, but she also ha does these uh, thread palettes, which I have just gotten so that I actually use these. It's a good way for me to keep organized, especially on primitive pieces where I maybe only have a few colors and I can just put them all in a card and tuck them right into my project bag. Um, I've got, this is Marie Antoinette, and these make great gifts. These make great gifts. And so you'll find these, I think under primitive hair in my, under primitive hair, and um, cool stuff and other junk maybe, and you might find them in the needlework tools section too. Um, the birds with the nest. I've got this one with bees, which is really cute. Now these are all made by her husband and they're printed just on wood and they, I mean, they smell like fresh cut wood. And then this owl one is so new that she doesn't even have it on her Etsy store yet. And so that one is brand, brand spanking new. 
and I think it's really cute for fall. But these make great gifts, or you know, like if you have to do an exchange or something, or if you um, just want to get one for yourself because you think they're cute. I don't know if I have a favorite. I don't know. I think I like this one the best. It's kind of like my necklace, right? Um, so those are the three things. But check out my website. I add more and more all the time. I think I've added another 100 things this week. And so it, the website's getting pretty big with lots of really cool stuff. I am getting in um, Brenda Keys, the sampler company. She does lovely reproductions and also original sampler designs. And I had had somebody contact me this week and she said, hey, are you going to ever carry um, the sampler company's charts? And I said, well, yeah, eventually I'm trying to get people added as quick as I can. You know, that's on, she's on my list of things to add. And she said, well, I can't find, I can't find them anywhere. And I said, oh, well, you could try, you know, this person or this person. And she said, I contacted them. They never got back to me. I said, okay, well, try. How about this other person? She said, um, she never got back to me either. So I was like, shoot. And I said, well, I guess I'm going to take that as a sign that I need to order the sampler company stuff. And so I ordered it, paid for it. And Brenda said it should be here on Monday. So I will have a whole, whole, whole bunch of her stuff. Um, and I'll probably show a few of those next time. They're really great, very inexpensive charts. Like I said, some of them are reproductions and a lot of them are her original designs that look like reproductions. She stitches primarily in DMC, so they're pretty inexpensive projects. And um, she's just really, really sweet too. And I like sweet people. Okay, so that's shop news. I'm gonna take a minute. This is, have I ever shown this? This is Plum Honey by Clinique. And it's, they don't call it like lipstick. What do they call it? Oh, black honey. I'm sorry. Black honey. Oh, it's called almost lipstick. It's kind of cool because no matter who puts it on, it looks different. So like on me right now, it's looking kind of pink. Even though if you look at it, it looks, right? I've seen people put it on and it looks red or deep red or, it, I don't know. It's like, it's like the, um. What do they call those? Um, you know those little, oh, those like mood rocks or whatever where you like hold it in your hand and then it changes the color and if it's like green, you're really angry. <laughs> like it tells you what your mood is. I don't know, maybe this is like a mood lipstick. Um, Clinique. I don't often wear lipstick, but if I do, that's what I wear. And it was just on my table, so that's what I was thinking about. Okay, so I'm going to do a pretty lengthy show and tell now with... Um, with stuff that I got in, not only in uh, Minnesota, but I had missed a couple of things from recently too. Stick around if you'd like to see. If not, see you later. Okay, are they gone? No, just kidding. <laughs> okay, so that's, let's just go to show and tell. Now what, what am I gonna start with? I'm gonna start with these, cause these I got um, recently off of eBay, things that are discontinued. This is the 2000 Christmas Sampler by Kathy Barrick. And I don't, maybe this one is still available. Maybe it's still available. Maybe I just didn't know. I feel like it's not. But anyway, how cute is that? Those little deer are so, so cute. And then I found a couple of good huswives recently on eBay too. This one is Elizabeth Walborn, 1817. And I love blue and brown together. And I love samplers with a lot of creative white space. And then I got this one, which is not a reproduction. It's an original called Potter's Hill. It's got a dog on there and stuff. Oh, Dottie. You're just getting all kinds of cat. They're so happy I'm home, can I tell you? I didn't end up with a black eye this week. You gonna go? She says, I'm gonna go. Okay, don't, don't step in that though. Okay, I guess I'm gonna start with like the amazing thing, which is that we had this raffle for the shelter and I won one of the prizes, which was really nice. It's a LaHaye's shaker tray. He's on Etsy, LaHaye's shaker boxes. Um, I have bought behind right there is a LaHaye's shaker box that I bought a while back and it's red. And this was um, a donation for the raffle and I won it and it's really, really, really nice. Um, if you have a chance, if you're looking for some kind of, you know, just they're really good quality. I know I will use the heck out of this. I just have to find a good spot and um, decide what I'm going to do with it. Smell? It smells good. So that was very, very nice to win that. Super nice. Um, okay. 
at Stitchville. Stitchville has been around for a while and it's no, I didn't, I didn't really ever go to Stitchville until a couple of years ago, even though I lived just a couple of hours from there because I had my own needle workshop and I had kids, like life was busy. I just, I didn't have time to just drive to Minneapolis to shop at a needle workshop. So I went to Stitchville knowing from the last time that I was there that they had a great clearance section where everything is half price. You never know what you're going to find. So some of this I found on clearance for half price, but some of it I found at full price. Stitch stores that have been around a while that are really packed full of stuff are fun. It's like a treasure hunt. And so you have to look in unconventional places. A lot of people will spin spinner racks or look on racks that are at eye level. Look down low, look up high, look inside things, look behind things, because you never know what wonders are lurking. And one of the last wonders I found was this Brenda Gervais Forget-Me-Not sampler that was a limited edition thing that I never even saw. I think this was one that caused quite a kerfluffle because there weren't enough of them or something. But it's very, very pretty. It comes with the fabric that she recommends you tea or coffee dye, which I'll throw in next time I do some of that. And then the, all the threads and the chart. So I got that. It says, when this you see, remember me. It's very, very cute. So I got that. Jen got one too. There were three left. They were on the floor under a spinner rack. I got, I haven't even looked at these <laughs> since I came back. I don't know. I don't know what the, I don't, I don't remember buying this. I mean, I'm sure I did. And where did I get this? Sarah Jane Grant, Deconstructed, Summerhouse Stitch Works. I don't know, did some, somebody may have gifted this to me? I don't know what the story is. Sorry, but there's the original sampler on the back. It sure is pretty. I don't know. That's a mystery. I got one of these cute little stitching palettes. It's got a, kit, a kitten cat with lots of holes. <laughs> I think she's very cute. They sell these at Nashville Market. That company comes. I can't remember what the company's name is, but they have really cool stuff. I got, actually, these are Jen's. She got three of these little cards, so I'll put those aside for her. Okay, I got samplers season uh, sampler of the season summer, which they had the model done and it is so cute. And um, this isn't one my this isn't one that my distributors carry or anything. And I just loved the sunflowers and all done up. It's really cute. It's got these really sweet bee skeps here. Jen has stitched these or most of them. And so I really like that one. I got um, the Owl Winder Pocket from Just Nan. And she unfortunately didn't have any of the owl heads left. So I'll have to see if I can find a winder to come to put in that. But you stitch the front and the back and the finishing instructions are included. And I don't, I don't carry Just Nan. I like that one. This was one I was, this was a down low kind of thing. So this is Chessie and me out on a limb. I wonder if I do this. No, let's try this. Hang on. Hold, please. Ugh. Okay. So see, that's, that's really, really cute. I didn't remember this one, but they had, let's see, I'm gonna pull the price off. They had the box and it's like kind of carved or etched but that's the little box that goes with the set. And it was, like I said, it was down low on the floor. And so price tags bug me. Just saying. See, <laughs> I think sometimes when you go to retreat and you're at a shop, like there's just a frenzy. I don't remember half this stuff. This is a swordfish scissors that I bought. <laughs> I want to say, I think I have, oh, I have a jellyfish scissor fob thing. I'm going to put that on this. I think that'll be super funny. Okay. So I, I got, apparently I got a swordfish <laughs> pair of scissors. I got the Quaker Bluebird sampler from Willow Hill Samplings. I had carried this in my shop at one point. It's very pretty. I think it's all just one color. 
It's like a blue on brown fabric. I guess I'm into blue and brown right now. Jen found this and picked this up for me. This is something I have looked at again and again and again. The Victoria Sampler. And it's cute, right? It's gingerbread um, etui. It comes with very complete instructions. Look at it opened up. Oh, it's so pretty. It's really cool. So she gave me that, which was so, so nice of her. Okay, these are the bargain, bargain bin things. I got, oop, she had a bunch of Bright Needle. So I got Bright Needle Elizabeth, Elizabethan Garden Sampler, which is very pretty. I've stitched, here, I'll show you. I think I've shown this one before, maybe. Oh, this is a Bright Needle. Very, very pretty. Their designs are really pretty. The colors are just really, really nice. So I got, and that's, they did this, this series of nine patch things. You know, it was nine squares. So I got that. More for my pile. I got, this is an old Hester's needle, which I used to carry these. Janie Applebaum, I think, right? Yeah, Janie Applebaum. And so there, it's not a reproduction. It's an original sampler. Very, very pretty. I hadn't seen one of these for a while. And it's quite old. 1997, so this is 21 years old already. Um, but her charts are really neat, and so I, I hadn't seen one of those for a while. La di da, I got this Harvest Angel one. I think that little scarecrow is really cute right here, and I think she's very cute. But it hurts to see her skirt is like a sampler. I don't know if that's available anymore. It says that came out in 07, so that's 11 years old. I got this old barrack samplers piece called Strawberry Fields. I love a big red house. That's that middle part. Yeah, it's just really cute. Lots of strawberries. And then I got this one. This is a carriage house samplings. <laughs> I probably can even order this one. You can't pass up a bargain. Merry Christmas from my heart to yours. That's really, really cute. I love the black. You don't think of black for Christmas often. This one is an old Lottie Da that I haven't seen for a while. Treat yourself well. And I think that's what I talked about my last hang with me. But I just love those little kind of butterfly shaped flowers. Okay, more Bright Needle. This one even has a big piece of tape on it. The Dutch Horn Book. Really cute. But some of these are really, they go back a ways. This one is Libby Q. And I'm, it's possible I have repurchased <laughs> things. It's possible. So some of these may be giveaways too, but you can't pass up half price and discontinued, right? Quilts for sale is another one. Bright Needle. And you can find a lot of these Bright Needles um, on eBay for real cheap. You know, two, three, four dollars. And they're, they work up really cute. They stitch most of their models over one thread, which I like. Remember I said I just I don't like stitching over one. I don't mind it if it's a small piece like this. I'm not in, interested in doing a 400 by 500 piece over one. Um, this one says, I, uh, we've lived on top of Windy Hill for years and love it still. And it's just really, really cute. And I think that's, a, oh, one more Bright Needle. This one I looked at recently on eBay and I was, I found it at Stitchable for half price. It's a little um, needle keep and scissors flat. And they may have done this as a kit or as a class. I'm not sure, but it came with the wool. And then I got this one. This is an old chart makers piece. So this is chart makers was good huswife and Kathy Barrick together. And a heart and hand for Bonnie. And it's just little and simple, but I think it's really cute. Okay, now. Don't go crazy when I show you this next little bit of stuff that I got at Stitchville. And then this is all that I got at Stitchville, but I've got more. So um, they had Hog River frames. They had Hog River frames. And they weren't on clearance, but she quit making frames like 15 or 16 years ago. So these frames, have been waiting for me. <laughs> I've been living on the wall at Stitchville. They had, uh, they have a little framing area there, but then they have lots and lots of frames hanging on the wall on just hooks, you know, and kind of similar sizes together. Well, if you look, all the frames are different. So it's not like a, a hook with five of the same frame. It's just miscellaneous hooks and they're kind of organized by size. 
but I caught out of the corner of my eye a glimpse of one of these frames. Okay, so there's one. All right. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, they have Hog River frames. I think this was the one that I saw. And I think you're, you could do it like this, but I think it would be really cute like this too. So you got to look at, the, like I said, you have to look in unconventional places. These, these have just been sitting at the back, on the back of these hooks for 15 or 16 or 17 or 18 years, however old they are. She doesn't put a date on them, but they are signed. And they're just so great. They're handmade frames and they're lovely and you can't find them anymore. And okay, they do not, they do not have the frame for Remember Me by Birds of a Feather. That's the witch where it's got the frame that I showed one time. They don't have that frame. They don't have that frame. So don't call them for that. But they did have this frame and I think I got the only one. It's square. It's a six by six. Really cute. And then I got two smallish frames. I kind of wanted to buy all of them. They still have they still have more frames left. I got five. And what am I going to use them for? I don't know, but I have them so that when I want to use them, they're here, which is great. Okay, so that's what I got at Stitchville. That was super fun. I totally did not remember <laughs> those swordfish scissors. That was probably, I think those were near the register, and I was like, oh, I'll throw these in. Whatever. Okay, so like I said, at the retreat, one of the things was that they had a table of giveaway stuff where it was just, and I didn't bring anything for it because Michelle had said they weren't going to do it, but then people brought stuff anyway, so then I felt bad that I, I didn't contribute to it, but next time I'll contribute. So it was four or five tubs of charts and kits mainly. There was a little bit of like just kind of um, finishing fabric and some other kind of miscellaneous in there. But, you know, we got there on the second day. The the show the thing started Thursday. We came Friday at about 1 or 1.30 after we went to Stitchville. And so people had been looking through it for a while. And I didn't go right up, but then people were like, oh, there's, shepherd, there's lots of Shepherd's Bush stuff up there, full kits even. And um, they were like, people haven't taken them and I love shepherd's bush I probably have stitched more shepherd's bush pieces than any other designer I I just I grew up on stitching shepherd's bush samplers and so some of these were things I well the things that I picked up are things I didn't have I didn't take everything there was a ton of it and I thought oh boy somebody gave up on shepherd's bush hard <laughs> you know you kind of wonder like what happened that someone just said dump it dump it all and so Sue said, well, the story is that actually um, Sporty Stitcher, who's very, very, very sweet. She's done a few floss tube videos. I think her name is Jennifer, um, had gone to an estate sale. And it was a, like a 50-year-old woman or 52 or something. And I think her name was Kim, maybe. And she passed away suddenly. And so they were having a... Um, an estate sale with her things and she was a, a hardcore stitcher and Jennifer told the woman I think the mother of this this woman who died you know I I'm only I only can buy a couple of these but I'm going to this retreat and if you can't you know if you don't find buyers for them feel free you know I, I'm going to this retreat and I, I know I could find good homes for this and she said just take it take it all so she sent her with everything it, that's my understanding. And so a lot of these never were never were used. I know that she looked through them because I can tell with the way the kits are put together that she went through and like looked at the threads and then they didn't go back in the order that they usually are. So I know that she enjoyed looking at her stash. I'm sure she must have been quite a stitcher. Some of these kits didn't have the supplies anymore, so it's obvious that she stitched them. But... Um, kind of went hog wild on the shepherd's bush stuff because I really liked it and no one else was really taking it and there there was a lot so I feel once I looked through it I was like oh geez you took a lot but there was a lot a lot a lot and so I got I got these sets of cards and I stitched a few of these back in the day and I don't know whatever happened to them and I used to have the cards it's possible that I lost them we had a flood at our house and I lost all of my stash this was back in like 1993 Six or seven January of 97 I think so these are just little little tiny tiny samplers 
with specialty stitches. Little gardens, the, they turn out to be like four by six inches-ish if you do them on 32 count. That's so pretty, violets. Now these you can find on eBay if you're looking for them. Bluebells, and they did them kind of in series. See, at the time they were $2. And it's possible Shepherd's Bush still has some of these. The Arbor, Buttercups. Rowanberry, Whortleberry, the Root Garden. I know I stitched that one and I would happily stitch it again. It turns out super cute. The Herb Garden, Amaranth. Did I get back? I did. So I got those. I was pretty tickled. I actually have even looked at them on eBay a couple of times recently. Um, sometimes you can find somebody who's getting rid of like a whole set of them, but they're very cute. They're fun to look at and they come with st stitch diagrams. So you can, you know, do the specialty stitches. So if you want to try a few little specialty stitches, these are just kind of a painless way to do that. And you just need a little piece of fabric and some DMC floss. Okay, I got checkered sheep, which is really, really cute. Um, I think, you know, it. this is older and it looks a little bit slightly dated at this point, but I really still like the inside of that checkerboard. And I think it could be really cute. So I got that. I got, um, this one was one that she obviously had stitched. The chart is kind of rough and then it didn't have the supplies with it. But the herb garden is the, the herb gatherer is the only one of the four gatherers that I haven't done. I did toy, wool, and earth. And herb was the one that I didn't have. And she's so plump. But they're, they're fun to stitch. Just DMC floss so it won't be hard to kit up. This one I got, She Tends, and this is a newer one, which I really like. And I didn't realize just until just now when I took this out that it came with all four sterling silver charms that were $16 a piece, I think. Yeah, she got this at the Silver Needle. So that's really cool. So I, I feel like that's one that I might do first because I think it's really cute. I'm overusing really cute, but it's, it is cute. The uh, Thoughtful Heart is another one. And I used to carry these in my shop. I probably won't again, at least not for the time being, because I just got to focus a little bit. But this came with all the silks and the embellishments. Um, an American Sampler. Love the framing on that one. Jill Rensel came with the silks and the fabric. Very pretty. This one is Emmanuel's song, and I remember carrying this one. Now this has a lot of huck weaving in it, and so it's it's tricky. These, like this row here is huck weaving, and um, it's one where you really gotta pay attention to where you're going. It's fun once you get the hang of it, but it's tricky. And there's just a lot of, you know, bands. I just, I love their band samplers. Like, I, like I've said it before, but Shepherd's Bush really introduced me to, to the idea of samplers. You know, even the old ones, even even though theirs are originals. This one is family sampler, and it's like a kind of like a Quaker, but like a like a modern day Quaker sampler. Really pretty. French heart. That one's really pretty, and this one came with the silks, obviously. Really, all of these did, except the herb gatherer, I think, and the fabric. But this, I mean, it was piles of these kits. Queen bee, I love her. Look at how cute this little queen bee person is at the top. That I'm, And I'm sure any of these that you like, I'm sure you can still get on the Shepherd's Bush website. I think they're at shepherdsbush.net. Uh, this was in the giveaway too. I love Fancy That, and I don't think I have that one. Snow Day, this little wonky angel. That's probably a Hog River frame. Fabric, embellishments, frame. <laughs> it just says, oh, frame. Fancy That made that frame. All right. Fancy That's are easy to find on eBay, too. This one, somebody must have done it and, and you know, whatever. Oh, say, can you see? I don't have this one, but I think it's really cute. Jen stitched it. And it's very, very cute. Uh, a Bright Needle was in the giveaway pile. This is one of those. It's like one of those nine patches, but it's a variation on it. See how the deer go up and above? I, I really like this little row of houses at the bottom. This is a drawn thread. I don't think this one was probably ever even opened. An open heart. I used to carry those. 
This one was really popular when it came out. It's very pretty. Her charts are really nice. She's quite talented. Um, Seeds of Friendship by Just Nan. I had, you know, you get so that you're going through and you're like, I'm taking too much. I'm taking too much. But everybody, I think I picked this up on the last day. No one had wanted it yet. And so I, I took it because it really is pretty. And they're fun to stitch, these little Just Nan samplers. And it comes with the... Uh, with the Lady Charm. Christmas Soldiers by Just Nan. I liked this ornament and I love this band up here. I don't think I would make it into a stocking, but I like those two pieces of it. And that came with the embellishment pack. There was a whole, whole bunch of Just Nan too. A whole bunch of it. Hummingbead Heaven. This was one I used to sell at my shop. And this came with the button too. And I always liked this little rabbit at the bottom leaping through the cabbages. And it's got the hummingbird at the top and the charms are with it. Um, this is a set of three to be continued. It's Barnaby's Quest and it turns out like that. I have Miss Scarlet's whatever, whatever. And um, I have all three parts of that, but I never got the Barnaby's Quest one. And so it's a bee themed sampler. And then this is the last one, Catnip Tea, which again, this I think I picked up on the last day. And it's an oldie, but a goodie. I wonder when this one came out. Does it say? I don't think it says. Oh, I mean, that's funny. There's a correction page in here from 1996 from Rec Crafts Textiles Needlework Postings. So from the old bulletin board group. But um, it has this uh, kind of a black work section of cats here in the middle, which I think is really neat. So that's what I got. Um, it's a lot. It's fun, super fun. And you know, people think like, oh, you have a shop, why would you buy anything from another shop? Because they have stuff I don't have. And I'm a needleworker too, I like to stitch too. I don't only like to sell, I like to, to buy and stitch and support other people. And um, Deb has got just a really great shop. If you ever make it to the Minneapolis area, make sure to stop by and check her out. Her shop is enormous and um, really just very, it's a, a wonderland, like Willy Wonka's wonderland of needlework supplies. Okay, that was a lot of show and tell. And that's all I got for this week. Well, it's all I've got for today. I'll do another hang with me tomorrow that'll post on Sunday as usual. And I thank you for hanging with me this long. It's good to be home. Here's what's good about it. When I came home, I went, because I have no trips coming up. The only trip that's really in my future is in March for Nashville Needlework Market. And I just love being home and I have we're still doing clean out here at the house and we've got some projects that are underway and um, I just want to hunker down and enjoy fall and you know cook some food and hold my cats and you know I, I started um, working on a design yesterday and it's really cool what is it called a savior's praise is what I'm calling it it's really nice. And so if any of y'all have offered to be a model stitcher for me, um, or if you'd like to be a model stitcher for me, send me an email at excesspeddler at yahoo.com. I'll put the link below. Um, because now, now that I've got the website built, you know, I've got these trips and shows and things out of the way, the next, you know, long while, months, are going to be designing and stitching and releasing pieces, which is what I need to be doing. And so some of the stuff that I've been doing that is kind of not optional, but like lesser, like ironing fabric and packing orders. Not that it's not important. I'm training my son how to do it. And so I'm giving, he's getting a little extra cash on the side, but also um, it's freeing me up to do the things that I need to be doing. So I will see you tomorrow if you decide to come hang with me. And if not, I will see you next time. Bye.